So when I was offered this to review, Jenny said, what do you want that for? We've already got a perfectly good sat nav. However, I thought, well, this might be quite useful and I like the look of it. I thought it could be useful if we're looking at maps whilst we're on the move. So let's find out who was right. So this is my review of the CarPuri W901 9 inch portable car stereo. And as usual, I'm not being paid to say anything nice about this. I'm going to tell you what's in the box, what it's for, and I'll show you how it works. And I'll let you know if I did need it after all, and hopefully help you decide if this is something that you need too. So the price. It's £191 if you use the affiliate link in the video description below. So do check that out. So first of all, what's in the box? What's it for? Well, it's for older vehicles that don't tend to have built-in applications like Android Auto or Apple iPlay. The law on mobile phones recently changed and uh, you're now not allowed to use your mobile phone whilst you're driving or even for filming or anything. So this gives you hands-free access to compatible phone apps, sat-nav apps like Google Maps or compatible sat-nav apps, music apps, like Napster or Radio Player for stations like the Greatest Hits. Uh, music stored on USBs and SD cards. It's got a big display, as you can see in the vehicle. Uh, you can use it for phone calls. So what are the mounting options? So this is the, the first mounting option. It's got this rather strangely shaped plate here that you can use, but uh, it does allow you to tilt tilt the unit backwards and forwards. Uh, the odd shaped mounting bracket comes with a bit of double sided sticky so presumably you find a surface on it and stick it down. Notice it's also got screw holes in there so you could doubly attach it if you want to screw into your dashboard. And this is the sucker mount, the window sucker mount. And as I showed you on the car, that is really, really sticky. Adjustable there and adjustable there. So it's got a bit of an extension on it. But I found that, because that's quite heavy on that bracket there, found that quite, quite a weight to support on a longer arm like that. And the final mounting option is this plate here, which again has got screw holes on it, but it's also got a, a double a, a sticky back on here I won't take it off but you can stick that down to a surface and, and screw it as well and then you could use the sucker mount on that one yeah that's the sucker mount attached to that plate I'm never going to get that off you know that now there's two plates there's a CD slot mounting option and you can buy that separately and an air outlet mounting and you can also buy that separately it features support for Google and Siri Assistant it's got a nine inch touchscreen. It's got iPlayer, Android Auto. It's got sat nav support, mirror link, Bluetooth. It's got an FM transmitter so you can hook it up to your radio. It's light sensing. It has an equalizer. So what are the input options? Well, Android Auto, Auto Link 
Pro, and that's a downloadable app, and that gives you mirroring on Android. I play, as I said, wireless mirroring on your iPhone. You can use a USB stick and an SD card to play your own music. Two output options, a three and a half millimeter jack, an FM transmitter to hook it up to your radio in your, in your car or motorhome. So what was it like in use? What about the setup and mounting? Here's the connection in the car. But I can take that off and it's there now. Let's see this. On this bracket here. This bracket, uh, I don't know. I'm not that convinced about this. It's sort of banging a little bit there. Wobbling about. And as it's going along, it's doing that. So obviously I could lift it up a bit higher, but I don't really feel that that is supporting it that well. As you can see, it's sort of pulling on it. I also say that this backing on here is incredibly sticky. As you can see this, this is a really sticky stuff. And uh, it's quite difficult to get off the windscreen. I suppose they've done that deliberately to support the weight of the whole, the whole thing. You see, with the arm like that, that's quite a, quite a way out. You can extend it a bit further out, like that. And I possibly could have it a bit closer. But I think there's even more weight then on it. So it would go. be a little bit closer I still feel that there's quite a view there well, there's a view obscured there quite a bit of the uh, the road is obscured it would be better if I could mount it down here somewhere I was gonna say somewhere down there but I don't think that's gonna oh it's not gonna stay there is it because they see this surface underneath is a bit is a bit crinkly so no I can't mount it there Maybe I could mount it over there. It is that this is connected with the Autolink uh, software and lead. So the lead, the where is it? The lead goes into the little socket here for the, for the auxiliary into there. I've got no USB on this uh, on this radio in the car. Um, I've got it mounted there, so I've had to unplug my dash cam power adapter which is in there somewhere. It's in there somewhere. There it is. Yeah, I've had to unplug my dash cam power adapter. But you will need a doubler if you're going to use it in the car like that. Here's a connection in the motor via FM. Uh, so this is my normal sat nav here in position. Normally on one of these friction plates. There's my friction plate just like that and that normally sits just there so I'm wondering where to mount it so in case you're unaware some Fiat Ducatas have this pull up it's really for a tablet this pull up unit here what you do is you grab hold of the back of it and pull it up and it comes up like this it's got a locking lever here you pull that and these things pop out and in theory you can put a tablet in there in this sort of unit and then you close that lever and in theory it locks these arms in place now it's sort of a little bit balanced there but actually it's not bad it's quite thick at the base there so these legs here don't really sort of sit sit all that well on here one slight drawback with this arrangement is I can't I can't close the blind there, but if I put this down now I can. I can close the blind, but obviously I can't put it up like that. But that works. Okay. So that's it in that position. Oh well, that's okay. I'm a bit I'm quite pleased with that actually. I could have my sat nav over there and Jenny could watch that. 
I could hear it. I could probably just about see it from here. Or I could, of course, put it... There's no, nowhere really there. I could put it on the, in the corner there. But it's probably okay there. Probably angled a little bit towards me. Like that. Yeah, that works. With this, I'd have to use the FM transmitter on here because this is a USB and all they provide is a three and a half millimeter cable for audio. So switch that on. I've got it on 87.5. So if I tune the radio into that, 87.5. Oh, so we've got Android Auto. And I haven't got, got my phone with me. So probably an idea to bring my phone with me. Incidentally, if you switch the ignition off, that goes off. Unlike the radio. Connection, Bluetooth, Bluetooth. Yeah, you see it's connected to the sat nav, so if I connect it, car pure ride. That's it. That's now come up and seemed appropriate. So, USB stick, and it's loaded up with some music from YouTube. Um, I don't think it's called YouTube Studio. Free mode uh, music. That's the right way around. So, put the USB card in. Tap that. So it's not playing because I'm playing it through, I haven't got the device speaker on. Oops, wrong one. Now if I go back to settings, turn the device speaker off, and we go to the FM transmitter, and we'll tune into that radio station. And that's playing on the radio, on the car radio. And it sounds all right. Sounds quite good. The FM transmitter. And obviously, whilst I'm playing this music, I could, I could uh, do some equalising. I don't know what difference it will make. Let's try it. Go back. We had some issues with mirroring and rotation. We had some issues with the radio player locking up and Apple Music. We used Napster a lot. Right, so I want, if I want to use Autolink, I've got to change some settings in here. So if I go to settings and I go there, no, it's right there, and I use Autolink there, so that needs to be highlighted. I then plug in a lead. Yeah, it will say start recording or casting with Autolink Pro. So I say start now. So if you can see that now, that is a mirror of my phone. So it's mirroring my phone. So presumably I can use most of the apps on here. So I don't know, try Duolingo. Now you see that is just in portrait mode. So that won't switch from portrait to landscape. Some will, some won't. Outlook will. Okay. So that's quite useful. So I can read me emails. Uh, what else can I do? I'm going to YouTube Studio. But that, that won't. <laughs> it's quite frustrating. Like I say, some will do it, some won't. Um, Twitter. Twitter will, there you go, or X or whatever it's called now. So that is quite useful and that was one of the reasons I quite like this device because if I scroll across 
here. I can obviously I can do this on the screen. It's just easier for filming purposes that I'm doing this on here. So if I tap that, that will go into the OS Maps, and I can then tilt my phone and I can show you where we are. Just yeah, well there you go. Uh, Swift command will do it. <laughs> so I can. To say you have to have the phone it's the phone that controls the mode which is a little bit irritating because unless you put your phone down in landscape mode <laughs> that's the only way it displays it so that's the limitation with that the problem is with iPlay can you just press iPlay it, it wants always to connect to Jenny's phone. So if I'm using my phone, or Jenny's using her phone, it wants to connect to them. So when you're driving and you decide you want to play something on your phone, you then end up fiddling with your phone. So Jenny's got on her phone, uh, got the car pure ride. So what's it say there? No internet connection. No you internet. Tap, on, tap on it. And then it's got auto join on there. And then it suddenly came up, didn't it? No, it's just stuck like that. So, honestly don't know what to do now. I find you in Bluetooth, it says it's not connected. Oh, so to tap on it there. Okay, now it's connected. So this will then think about it. It just says no internet. No, I know, I know. But that should then... Yeah, there we go. So it's now in the... It's really difficult to show with the sun shining, but so it's now in there, and you've you've now got your phone, music, apps, messages. So those are the Apple apps, aren't they? Yes. Okay, and you can you can swipe across, and it defaults to Apple Music. And I haven't I haven't got a subscription to Apple Music, so I've got nothing on there to play. Yeah. So and you can't uninstall it, you reckon? No, because it's part of Apple. So. It's almost useless for the phone for music. Well, unless, I mean, Not gone. I've got apps. If you go across to here, I've got Napster. That and we, we try used that. To have. We try that, yeah. We'll try, no, I'd try it on there. Try that, and it just says, I thought something in. Because it's because Apple Play's taken over. I know, and Apple Play's taken over on here. So we don't use Apple Play, we use Napster. Yeah, or I tried to listen to Greatest Hits Radio and yeah. I can't, I don't think I can do that. No. So he can't use it for for Jenny's sure. phone. We tried the Greatest Hits Radio thing, haven't we? That's that's through something called Radio Player. Not not from my phone it is, and I haven't got Radio Player. Okay, so just tap on that. So how did we get there then? Bye. I'm out of it now. Here, that's looking at my phone, yeah, isn't it? And what yeah. I've got on there. Yeah. So all I, I've got a Greatest Hits app, yeah. which I normally use yeah. plugged into yeah, the, the radio. Yeah. Yeah. So Greatest Hits radio, okay. I can't use it. Can't use it. So the only way I can use this is connecting to my phone. So let's have a look at that. Yeah. So at least now I'm connected to my phone. I still can't use Napster. It wants me to sign in on my phone no, to continue. Yeah. To continue. So I've had to stop, go sign in to my phone on Napster, and then it's uh, it's started. I uh, started Napster on my phone, not on the Pure Ride. And then it came up. And then there. it came up, which is probably okay if you set it up before you set off. But you're not going to want to be doing that whilst you're driving. So what are the pros? Well, it's cheaper and less effort than replacing the whole head unit. You can use your own phone apps and the hands-free. You have a bigger screen than most built-in radios. You've got plenty of mounting options and you've got plenty of connection options. So what are the cons? Well, you need somewhere to mount it, basically. Um, window mounting on that extension is a little bit wobbly. And I think you probably don't need it if you already have a good sat-nav. 
uh, we have. You do need to make sure the apps are compatible. And it may be a bit distracting at this size. I think possibly the smaller size may be useful. And it might be better if the passenger uh, uses it. We did have some issues with the mirror and rotations. So conclusion, probably better if it's linked just to one phone or if you're going to have a passenger who can use it to minimize those distractions. Or, uh, and if you rely on Google Maps, this is ideal. It's good if you have an older vehicle with an Android Auto. It does sort of bring you up to date and you've got the iPlayer and everything built in. Would I have bought it myself? Probably not because we rely on our sat nav and using both of them is quite distracting. But overall, I think it's quite a good add on and it may be useful if you uh, use Google Maps or other apps for your navigation. So if you found this interesting, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that notifications icon. I'll be bringing you plenty more reviews like this. So we'll see you soon. Bye then.